Good evening. Well, we're here in the dark after setting up the clock the other night um, with another little project. Um, and I'm trying to set the time for this. So we've come up with a little clock timer now. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. And quite a few people said, oh, well, if you're going to use an Arduino, you know, the fact is that the crystal isn't temperature regulated. Um, and it's only as accurate as you can, you know, as the as the timer itself. And that's absolutely true. And I'm not trying to get absolute precision here. What I'm trying to do is just get this very close or as close as I can. Because the problem that I've already experienced is that the closer, of course, you get the clock, the harder it is to physically time it with a timer or the longer you have to wait to actually have to be able to adjust it to see any errors. So I just wanted to show you what I've come up with here. Um, we've got here a little infrared sensor down um, near the pendulum. So it's an infrared uh, transmitter and receiver package. Um, and that's just been tuned so that it's not detecting the backboard. And you can see it blinking there when the pendulum passes. And then down to the Arduino. So we're using an Arduino Uno, and I don't know how well this is being picked up on the uh, on the screen, but we've got an Arduino Uno, and it's showing the time period. So it's showing one complete pin, uh, period. Now, even though this is a one second uh, pendulum, of course, for one complete uh, period, one complete swing of the pendulum, that is two seconds. So the T is showing the actual time of the last, in real time, the time of the last pendulum. The E down at the bottom is the error. Now that is the error actually for a one second pendulum. So that's half of that. Maybe it'd be easier just to double it and show the error on a full complete cycle. But I'm showing the error on one swing, i.e. the error on one second. And that's uh, using a rolling average. So you can see that's not deviating massively and you might not show it uh, or see it deviating as much as the actual time is showing, but that's because it's using a moving average. Uh, and then the D up at the top right is just showing the drift. So that is uh, seconds per hour, how many seconds per hour this is drifting. Um, and at the moment it's about 4.6, or let's say 4.4 4 seconds, four and five seconds uh, slow each hour. The bottom right was actually, I've just left it in there. It was more of a, uh, a bit of a debugging thing really. It was just to check that I was indeed showing or counting when each pendulum passed. Um, and there was no errors there, it just cycles through one to nine and then back. It was just a simple way really of, of seeing the pendulum passing. So what we're going to do now, um, I will just go over to the serial monitor again. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the screen, uh, but there's a little bit more detail there or a bit, a little bit more accurate figures uh, being shown on the serial monitor. So what we're going to do now then is I'm going to knock this off for a minute. I'm going to stop the pendulum and I'm just going to try and speed it up a little bit. And like I say, we've got a deviation of about 4.5 4 seconds per hour um, and an error of about 0 0.0134. So I'm going to give this um, pendulum one complete turn and try and raise it a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll see if it's made a difference. OK, well, I'm back with it now. Um, and you can see there's definitely been an improvement there. This has been running for about five, ten minutes now. Uh, and already we're getting a drift of only about 2.7, 2.8 seconds per hour. Um, okay, gone up to three. Um, and a much smaller error as well. So let's just put the camera down now, play around with it a little bit and try and get this somewhere as close as we can. Okay, so I've only been playing around with this for about another five minutes. Uh, it's getting a bit late now, but I'm getting down to sort of less than uh, one second drift per hour. Um, which is fluctuating about that, so I believe it's lower than that personally. Um, but that's pretty good just for get, just for five minutes of tuning. So a little bit more fettling. I uh, just wanted to show you the principle really. And I've got a little bit more uh, to do with this code. Um, but it seems to be working and like I say, it's just far more accurate. I'm not saying this is absolute precision, but it's far, far more accurate getting the clock uh, close to, to keeping time far closer than I could do without this device. All right, well, thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time, maybe when I've got an update and I've improved this code a little bit. See you next time.